The second example I want to give is, and I'm going to switch notation just a little bit, just so you don't get bored. I'm going to look at the curve y equals 1 over x. That's a curve that uh, looks like this. And those curves are called hyperbolas. And you'll notice that x equals 0, that's not defined. So there is no such thing. Now again, let's write down some expectations. For instance, it's not defined at 0, because there's no function that can't have a derivative. Item 2 might be, for instance, what about for x positive? y prime is negative. What about for x negative? So this has a function that whose derivative should always be negative. What should happen as x goes to infinity? y prime should approach 0. And similarly, as x approaches minus infinity, y prime should also approach 0. And there are other things that should be true, but we won't do them right now. So now let's make the calculation and see if it fulfills our expectations. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This is the magic formula that we do over and over and over again. So we have, we have 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. And I don't like these huge fractions, so I'm going to stick the 1 over h out in front here. Well, what does this cry out to have done to it? It, should be, it says subtract, so let me subtract. I put it over a common denominator, and in the numerator here, I get x minus x plus h. The 1 over h comes along for the ride, and this in turn becomes a little bit of algebra helps here. It becomes minus h over x plus h times x, and the h's go away and it becomes minus 1 over x plus h times x. And now what do I do? I let h go to 0. Oh, here there's a missing. I let h go to 0. And this becomes minus 1 over x squared, correct? And so let me go back to this is the, the feel good part that you find out that indeed what you thought should be true is true. Is this thing, it's not defined at zero, it's always negative no matter what. And as x becomes very big, it becomes, goes to zero. And as x becomes infinitely, as it goes to the other side, it also becomes. Uh, that way. Now, by the way, my last thing, let's think about something that we haven't talked about yet, and that is this. Uh, what else, with minus 1 over x squared, what is true about that function? Is there something? Well, if you replace x by minus x, what happens to that? It stays the same. So this thing is the same at x and at minus x, which means that it's symmetrical around the y-axis. And is that reasonable? I haven't proved it, but it does seem pretty reasonable, doesn't it? That is to say, those two lines have the same slope, or in other words, those two lines are parallel. And so uh, what we can say is that people used to end their theorems with QEDs, but I always like to end a discussion like this, that I'm happy.